Francisco Ponce, and I am a neurosurgeon at the Barrow Neurological Institute. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about targeting the subthalamic nucleus for deep brain stimulation surgery. So, so I'm going to be going step by step through this video. Uh, basically, these are all the steps I take on the stealth navigation system. Uh, this is like the surgical planning station. And I think overall this, this video is sort of intended for uh, residents, uh, fellows, and observers uh, who watch the operation to kind of get a sense of those steps that I take in the operating room. And also for patient education. So you can see here I have four different uh, MRI sequences. The, um, these are done on a GE scanner. Uh, so it's an SPGR, which is like a T1 uh, high resolution three-dimensional study of both with and without contrast. And uh, a proton, proton density, that's what we see right there, or we just saw, and a T2 FSE. Uh, so all my DBS patients undergo these four sequences, uh, the SPGR with contrast, so I can see blood vessels. Uh, the main SPGR is sort of our core three-dimensional study. Uh, T2 FSE is good for visualizing the uh, subthalamic nucleus, and then uh, proton density to see the internal capsule and uh, primarily for the globus pallidus interna. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm uh, fusing, I'm merging the various studies. My registration scan is at the top, and that's uh, the SPGR. And I kind of uh, verify all these uh, initially. I, ver I kind of double check that we actually have a good merge uh, later on once I've uh, assigned the uh, 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 intercommissure, pusher commissure, and uh, basically reformatted the imaging. So. During this time, the patient's basically going to sleep with anesthesia uh, or a place in the frame, and um, this is a surgery that's done under general anesthesia. So I'm just windowing. Again, I have four sequences up at this point. And usually the default is a little bit dark, so I'm magging it up. And there's the anterior commissure. window so you can kind of see what the um, we're marking the ACPC points and then three midline points so I'm storing those so you can see here it gives you once you define the AC and PC uh, it tells you what the distance is between them 25.52 and once I have that initial reformatting I may fine-tune uh, my selection of those points so floor of the fourth ventricle, and then I typically take two points in the supratentorial region along the, uh, the faults. So there I was considering using the, um, the ventricle as a midline point, but chose not to. All right, let's get this guy out of the way again. Okay, so now I've uh, reformatted the imaging. And what I'm doing here is I'm turning on all those different MRIs and making sure that uh, AC and PC match. So this is the step where I'm sort of making sure that we have good uh, co-registration. Okay, so now what I'm doing here, I'm using the user-defined coordinates in this uh, version of Stealth uh, 1244 is the sort of defined coordinates, uh, indirect coordinates, consensus coordinates uh, for STN. So I make that my target. This is a starting point. This isn't my actual target. And you can see here, we have a default of a 15 degrees from the mid-sagittal plane, 60 degrees from the axial plane, and it's a 120 millimeter trajectory. So that it gives you that automatically as soon as you set the target. And now I'm gonna refine it. I can reset my entry by uh, clicking set entry and what I'm looking at here is uh, making sure I'm not going into a sulcus finding a good gyrus looking at the coronal suture and in my practice usually I like to go right at the coronal suture or maybe just a little bit anterior but I don't go posterior but I also don't, don't do not go significantly anterior and you can see here as I'm adjusting my trajectory what's happening to our 
uh, sagittal angle as well as our uh, angle from the axial plane. So I've found its trajectory for the right, now I'm onto the left. Again, looking to see how I'm traversing this. Another thing I'm looking at with STN is how close I'm getting to the ventricle. So I'm dragging this. Here I'm exploring to see if I go to a more medial gyrus, how that looks, and I don't like that, so I'm gonna go back. Bring that so it's centered a little bit more on that gyrus. Double checking again that I like my right. You can see that the two trajectories are pretty well aligned. One's green, one's yellow, and they're overlapped in this uh, sagittal image. Now I'm looking at the, uh, the blood vessels. I saw that I'm kind of skiving a uh, sulcus, but that's after I've already started, so uh, that was on the other side, so I, I leave that. And now I look at the STN. So this is where I start direct targeting of the STN. Direct relative to the, to the anatomical images. And here I'm kind of incorporating a few uh, strategies. I'm looking at the coordinates. I'm looking at the red nucleus. There's an anterior border at minus 3.65. Looking to see where I like the visualization of the STN most. I'm at minus five right here. So I typically pick round numbers for my coordinates. So I'm 0.9 from the generic coordinates, now I've reset the target. So that's my target for left, now I go to right. I've already made the mirror image by taking out the negative from 12. And that's, that looks a little bit lateral, so I'm bringing it in. Typically with STN, if I do see an error, it's in the medial or posterior direction. So I count for that a little bit when I'm making my when I'm selecting a target. And you can see here the red nucleus on the right side is a little bit anterior to the red nucleus on the left. So that may influence uh, that may result in some asymmetry in my targeting for the uh, the STN. So here I'm taking a look at, there's the internal capsule. This is the uh, proton density, so I've just turned this on. And this is just to kind of eyeball how close my trajectory comes to the internal capsule. My one lead revision for STN was a patient where we were a little bit anterior lateral and uh, we picked up the uh, a fibrous in the internal capsule. So that can limit the ability to program. So now I'm scrolling a little bit up. I'm at minus four now. And actually I think I, I decided that I like this plane better for targeting. You can see I'm 0.4 millimeters off my plan. That's what this tells me up here. So I'll go back and forth a little bit kind of refining, deciding I, where I want to target, get a feel for the patient's individual anatomy. So that looks a little bit better, so I'm gonna reset the target. So now instead of targeting at the minus five plane, I'm targeting at the minus four plane. So I've, I'm at a new spot, and what I just did, I looked to see where I am relative to uh, my pre-existing plan. So 
So all this is just fine tuning. And also, in the back of my head, I'm kind of taking into account, all right, if I end up with a 1.1 millimeter posterior medial deflection, will I be happy with that position as well? And in this case, we combined uh, doing the operation under general anesthesia, but we also I used microelectric recording, uh, and we had good recordings to match the, um, the anatomy. And that can be done with a propofol drip, or the anesthesiologist can uh, you, in uh, my OR, we will use a quarter percent MAC. So there we are, kind of in looking at its relative position to the red nucleus. looking two millimeters past target to see how we're how we progress as we get deeper. Okay. So the next step after this, I think we're done targeting, is um, because I use the Lexel frame, I uh, One step I do, I, I take, I make an additional trajectory. So, uh, in order to plan both incisions, you know, I've split hairs, making sure we're kind of going in the right direction. I have a third plan that's called the right skull entry, and that targets the left side because I do the left side initially. So my initial frame setup is set for the X Y Z coordinates of the left, but I make the entry point the point at which my trajectory hits the right skull, and so it's a cross midline trajectory. So so here uh, we've now obtained a CT scan with the Lexol frame in place. So you can see the fiducials here, and now we're uh, merging everything to the CT. Uh, so we have, we've completed the planning, and um, now we're going to get Lexol coordinates. So here we auto register a 0.49 there. And similar to last time, uh, this is the step at which I make sure that our uh, AC and PCs match in the various studies because all four MRIs have independently merged with the CT scan. sure that things don't look off after we've remerged the studies. So now we jot down our Lexile coordinates. So we have a set of coordinates that XYZ ring and arc for left, for right, And then for the right skull entry, we only record the ring and the arc. Because again, those are going to be the XYZ coordinates for the left target, and a ring and an arc, which define the trajectory, a ring and arc that intersect the point at which the right STN trajectory hits the skull. And that's how we plan the burr holes. So 
that should be it for this part. The next step is going to be scrubbing in, doing the operation, uh, placing the electrodes, and uh, here we used microelectric recording. We did uh, we tested impedances of the electrodes. We turned on the electrodes to look for capsular side effects. And here we are. So here we've uh, obtained the CT after placement of the electrodes. So I've just uh, I'm accepting all the other merges. And you can see that the arc support is here. So this is the new CT scan. And there's the and there's the electrode. So you can see one of the two STN electrodes. Two hundred slices, so it takes a little bit for it to register. So it took a, quite a while for it to register. So now we go and window the contacts. position of the electrode relative to my target. So if I click on that, it'll tell me what my error is, 0.9 millimeters. And then I can see how it looks. This is the proton density. That's not the study I want. Here's the T2. What it looks like relative to the red nucleus, relative to the STN. And similarly, going to the right STN, and then seeing what my error looks like. And with that, we're good to close. We proceed with closure and uh, go ahead and mark uh, and annotate uh, my contacts. So I'll fast forward through this a little bit. So I've annotated all eight contacts, four on each side. And now I take the snapshots that I send to the referring neurologist, uh, documenting the ACPC position, my target, now I window it so we see a blend of the CT scan with the electrodes and the um, uh, T2FC. So there's my R0, and I'm taking little snapshots as I get each one so we can, I have the coordinates uh, of each contact that I've placed. All right, basically after that I burn a CD and um, uh, we proceed with the placement of the uh, internal pulse generator. We do that uh, immediately after placing the leads. Uh, so that is how a I plan a subthalamic nucleus uh, deep brain stimulation surgery. Uh, thanks for watching.